I'm Chuck Linick. I'm a reenactor. And that means I put on clothes not from this time period and try to bring the past to life. And for 36 years in the classroom, that's exactly what I did. Well, I now have time on my hands, a room full of garb at the house, artifacts all over the place, and I still have a passion for bringing the past to life and a desire to preserve landmarks. And so what I'm on now is a very pretentious sounding mission odyssey where I intend to visit each of the missions in Alta California, each of the Asistencias, those are spin-off missions, each of the Estancias I could find, those are ranches that help support the mission in food production, each of the Presidios, those are where the Soldados de Cuera or the uh, Leather Jacket Soldiers were stationed to guard Spain's interests. And whatever else happens to catch my fancy. I want to create this visual record of me visiting each of these places in garb for the different time periods in order to tell their stories. So what I am doing today is I am driving the approximately 60 miles from Mission La Purisima in Lompoc to Mission San Luis Obispo in San Luis Obispo because I intend to tell that mission story and I hope you stick with me. Okay, so who were living here in the area of San Luis Obispo? These were the Chumash. And this is going to be the northern extent of their territory. But they were found as far south as Malibu. They were on the Channel Islands. Um, and they were able to reach those with their redwood plank canoes they would sew together and line with asphaltum and uh, they also extended inland quite a ways and they spoke a number of different dialects and the one in the San Luis Obispo area will be called by the Spanish Obiseño and it's going to be the most divergent of all the dialects. Renowned for their ability to craft the tomo, the redwood plank canoes which were lined with asphaltum the Obispano Chumash traded those to the Salinans in the north. Now the Spanish had been exploring in the area since like 1602. Sebastian Vizcaino was sailing along the coast and uh, he was basically following up on uh, Cabrillo's exploration 60 years earlier. and. This guy you know, was, you know, mapping stuff and he's writing things down and his names happen to stick. Uh, whereas Cabrillo's, most of them didn't. But the Spanish really didn't stick around. This was kind of a flyby or sail by more properly, I guess. And something that this kind of was suggesting was that if the Spanish Empire wanted to expand, they ought to establish a chain of missions along the coast. Well, in 1769, the Portola expedition began exploring an inland route up to Monterey Bay. And August 30th of 1769, the expedition reached uh, what was going to be the uh, San Luis Obispo area. And when they'd crossed the Santa Inez River and it started moving up into uh, the more hilly terrain, they noticed uh, large numbers of bears. And the diarist, Father Crespi, he wrote in his journals that he, he called it the 
llano de osos or the level of the bears. Well, what if ended up what's going to end up happening is over time people are going to mistranslate Crespi's diaries and it becomes the Valley of the Bears. And um, as the expedition moved further on, they encountered Chumash villages and there were notes about how the women danced gracefully for the soldados and uh, the visitors were brought trays of ground nuts and uh, all sorts of goodies to uh, feast upon. And as the expedition went a bit further, they discovered there were a lot more bears. And the bears ended up, in some cases, attacking the uh, train and mauling a couple of mules. And there was one account of it took nine musket shots to bring down one of the bears, which I'm sure made a real big impression upon the Spanish. The next year, the Portola expedition is going to approach the same way. And they're going to come through the Valley of the Bears. And they're going to keep that in mind. That's going to become important later. But we are at Mission San Luis Obispo. And in June of 1772, some soldados from the Presidio by Sa Mission San Carlos were in the valleys around here, hunting for meat to supply Mission San Carlos and Mission San Antonio de Padua and the Presidio. They ran into a lot of bear who quickly became bear jerky. And it was decided that a mission would be founded here, that this was an excellent location. So on September 1st, 1772, Father Sarah dedicated this mission. The chapel, built of logs, was dedicated on September 1st, 1772, by Padre Serra, Presidente of the California Missions Chain, dedicated to St. Louis, Bishop of Toulouse, a 14th century Franciscan. It was to be the fifth mission in the 21 mission chain in Alta, California, fall under the purview of the Monterey Military District, and was midway between San Diego and Monterey. Father Sarah left one priest to begin the buildings, Father Jose Cavalier. Father Cavalier, five soldados, and two neophytes began the building, which is now the mission. They received help from the Chumash, who constructed palisades uh, that would serve as the temporary buildings for the mission. Unlike many of the missions, which were relocated over time, San Luis Obispo stands on its original site. The church was built between 1792 and 1794. Original mission buildings were the typical adobe with thatched roofs, and the mission itself was built in a traditional quadrangle. Curious local Indians came to the mission site. They were generally friendly, shared food with the missionary party. Neophytes were baptized. The mission colony grew. The first white child baptized in Alta, California, Juan Jose Garcia, was baptized at the Mission San Luis Obispo on November 11th, 1774. In time, there were also estancias at San Miguelito, Arroyo Grande, Santa Margarita, and Rancho de la Playa. Six miles from San Luis, where some hot springs were, was the Rancho Camado. There's remnants of walls there, possibly the ruins of a church where a padre might visit from time to time. Around 1775, work began on the Santa Margarita Asistencia. Not everyone was pleased with the Spanish presence, not just unfriendly tribes, but some Chumash as well. In November of 1776, arrows with burning wicks attached were fired by some Chumash into the dry thatched roofs of San Luis Obispo. These lit the Padre's quarters ablaze, and the fires soon spread, consuming all the buildings except for the chapel and a granary. Two leaders of the attack were caught and imprisoned at Monterey Presidio, and extra guards were deployed at San Luis Obispo Mission. Despite this, the unfriendly natives continued to attack, reportedly setting buildings ablaze on at least two other occasions before a solution presented itself. The missionaries remembered the tiled roofs of Spain, 
and experimented with making roofing tiles to protect the structures against the arrows. The tiles were made from clay worked by animal hooves in a pit. They were the first made in California. They did the job against the flaming arrows and more importantly perhaps served much better to protect the adobe walls against crumbling due to the weather. Very quickly all the California missions adopted them. Construction moved along. These are the Padres quarters. The combination vestibule which was added in 1820 and the belfry at the front facade of the mission while somewhat similar to that at San Antonio de Padua is unique among the California missions. Three bells were suspended in the church facade. Later Two more were added, and the five were named for the patron saints of the first five California missions. A long secondary nave to the right of the altar forms an L-shaped church plan, the only one of its kind in the California missions. Well, after 35 videos, I'm figuring it out. I knew it was going to take more than one to cover Mission San Luis Obispo. So I guess this one was more about the founding of it. And we'll cover more in the uh, next one. I hope you stick with me on my journey.